what I try to do in the book, as you say, is mention, name drop as often as I can, a lot of feminists <coughs> who belong to my heritage, who I can turn to. I don't, you know, as much as I admire and love Gloria Steinem and Jermaine Greer until she went culturally le relativist <coughs> on me and just, I had to part ways with her. But there are a lot of Western feminists that I do admire, but they're not the only ones that have informed my own feminism. I have women like Hoda Sharawi, who in the 1920s removed her veil and said, this is a thing of the past. I have women like Dorea Shafiq, who in the 1950s led a group of 1,500 Egyptian women uh, into storming the Egyptian parliament to demand political rights. Most people in Egypt do not know that, Hoda, that, that Dorea Shafiq did this. I have women like Nawal Sadawi, who's still alive today, she's about 84 now, who was one of the first Egyptian feminists, to my knowledge, to write so openly and poignantly about her own genital cutting and to talk about how it's affected her life. And there's the Moroccan sociologist feminist Fatima Mernisi, whose books on veiling informed my own decision to remove my hijab, because I wore hijab for nine years. So we have all these women, and we have contemporary women as well. In Saudi Arabia, where a lot of people would say, feminists in Saudi Arabia, I say yes. There are women like Menel Sharif, who every year, up until she had to leave and, and go to Dubai, because she was hounded out of a job, took part in uh, driving campaigns as part of civil disobedience to break the ban on women driving in Saudi Arabia. And several other women, all the way back up to the 1990s, when you had at least 40 Saudi women who, after Saddam invaded Kuwait, had their own driving protests to break the ban on women's driving. So all these women exist in countries as conservative as Saudi Arabia and as liberal as Tunisia and Morocco. But you never hear their names. Now, internally, you never hear their names because of that trifecta the state, the street, and the home, that are not interested in promoting this kind of feminist message. But one of the positive things that came about in the revolution in Egypt was many grassroots groups that, that came about after the revolution, like one group called Bahia Mas, and it was formed by, uh, it was launched by a woman who is also a, a diplomat in the Arab League, who brought together lots of young men and women. What they would do when they went out on protest was they would put the pictures of these women that I mentioned, all these names, on these big banners and they would march through downtown Cairo with the women's names as they waved these banners around so that people could see these women from our own history that had basically just been entirely forgotten. Now when the Muslim Brotherhood were in power, when Mohammed Morsi was president for that brief year, one of the things that they wanted to do in the curriculum was to remove all pictures of Dorea Shafiq because she wasn't wearing a headscarf. So we were, we were actively continuing to erase these women who should be our heroes. So these feminist groups who are coming about on the ground in Egypt were trying to bring her back. But I know that outside of the Middle East and North Africa, very few young women know about these. And I'm talking about women just in my region. But I'm sure if you look at women, if you talk about Pakistan, I can talk about women like Hina Jilani and Asma Jahangir. These are two sisters who formed the first legal firm formed by women in Pakistan. And who to this day, they defend women who've been attacked by acid attacks. They defend women who've been hounded by their families because of so-called honor, honor crimes. So, you know, I could, there's a whole list of, of women who have been intentionally or indirectly erased that our young women today, both in the various Muslim majority countries and outside, must know about. And the question is, why don't we know about them? Now, my book is just, you know, one of many that we need. But I think that those who work in counterterrorism and those who work in international organizations that want to counter the, the narrative of groups like Daesh would do well to start repeating these names, would do well to bring, like, in, in um, Oslo in January, I took part in a conference for Muslim women that was put together by a Norwegian-Pakistani woman called Dia Khan. Dia is a singer-songwriter um, singer who made a film about a young woman who was killed in a so-called honor killing because she had the nerve to escape her family and marry the man that she wanted. We have so many women like Dia, and in that conference hall in Oslo, she brought together women from dozens of countries why don't more people know about them? Why aren't they in our mainstream media?